Hi, I'm Ed Frawley. We're going to go through some uh, questions and answers here. Uh, we get a lot of emails every day with questions in them, and we try and answer them all. And then we pull some of the more common ones out and uh, put them in our newsletters. This first one, we get a lot of it. Uh, it's about dogs that pull on leashes. And it's a major part of my, my new basic dog obedience online course. Uh, first, I'll read the message. This is from Mike. I have a seven-month-old Johnson American Bulldog. He's very large for his age. I've not been able to break him of pulling. Uh, it's a habit that he does every time we take him out on the leash. What collar or harness do you recommend? Mike, this is really, really common, especially with people that are just new to dogs. We tell people that there are three ways of training dogs to walk on leashes. The first is competitive healing, which has nothing to do with you, but it's important, uh, I think, that I explain it because a lot of new dog owners uh, take their dog out and they expect their dogs to do uh, competitive healing, which is walk on your left side with your shoulder by your knee looking up at you. That's unrealistic to take dogs for walks. We train our dogs to do loose leash healing and controlled walking. Loose leash healing, I'll talk about that first. You don't want to, in my opinion, you don't want to use a harness with a dog that's like your dog because I think it's going to encourage the dog to pull harder. There needs to be some form of of control on the dog. Now your options are to either use a nylon slip collar, like our dominant dog collars that we design and I sell, or a prong collar. Every time I mention prong collar to new dog trainers and they see a picture of it, they freak out. They think it's some medieval torture device. I'll say this about prong collars. Every training tool that's made can be abused. A prong collar, when it's used correctly, does not have to be an abusive tool unless you abuse it. So what I tell people is get a prong collar, put it on their dog, let the dog self-correct into the leash. In other words, you don't have to crank this dog. Let him self-correct into the leash. Let him pull into the leash. He'll feel the prong collar. And most dogs are going to back off. I mean, I'm in the middle or the end now of producing our first online, uh, online course, Basic Dog Obedience. And Cindy has a two-year-old Border Terrier that never had a prong collar on until last week. We walk her on our bike trail a lot. And when she would meet people, everybody in the world is her best friend. Every dog was put here to be her best friend. And on the walks, on a flat collar, she's up on her back legs, walking, 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 wagging her tail, trying to get to people. So I videotaped her with her first experience with a prong collar. And we use the little bitty collars, little bitty prong collars. You don't have to put as much pressure on the little collars. I always recommend people use these small collars. And you can go to our website and see what I'm talking about. A lot of times people have big 90, 100 pound dogs and they think they have to have extra large prong collars. No, they don't. What they do is get the little bitty collars, buy extra links, put them on your dog, but use a backup collar. I don't care if you have a little collar or a big collar, prong collars come apart when they're not used correctly or on the small ones if you give too hard a correction and you have to have a backup collar on your dog in case that collar comes apart. We sell, um, a leash I designed called prong collar leashes. It has two snaps on it. A short one is the short one goes to the leash. So when you give the correction to the dog or the dog pulls into the leash, it's the short collar that ta it takes up slack and it's the short collar that's putting uh, pressure on the dog's neck. The other collar is a longer collar, a longer tab that attaches to the backup collar. So if the prong comes off, this long tab is still there and you still have your dog on leash. So back to the dog pulling. You let the dog uh, pull into the leash and with Stella, it stopped it right there. There was no correction. She felt that. She hit to the end of it. There was no yelping, no nothing. 
From that point on, you'd think she was a little angel and that she'd been trained forever with that. That was the end of the deal. But if your dog doesn't do it, then you're going to have to give it a bit of a pop on a leash. How hard you pop depends upon the reaction to the dog. If you're, if you're, if you're training a pet and you have a 100-pound or a 90-pound dog, bulldog of some kind, it's dangerous. I mean, you can't have a dog pull you down the street, either towards another dog, either out into the street, if there's another dog across the street. You've got to deal with this. So those people that are 100% motivational trainers, good. They can, do the, they can do what they want, but in my opinion, it's only a matter of time when you train a dog motivationally, it's only a matter of time before whatever distraction is over there is more powerful than your high value food reward, your high value toy, or your praise. And at that point in time, if you don't have another option, and the other option is some form of force to stop the dog, then you have a serious problem and it could be a dangerous problem. And force doesn't need to be jerk the dog off his feet. The people that are against prong collars think that, oh, you're going to give your dog a prong collar correction, huh? Yeah. That's the kind of trainer you are? Yeah. Okay. That's not it. It might only be a little pop. It might just be enough to redirect the dog back to you. When he turns, carry a bake pouch with you. Have it on you all the time. Have it full of high-value food rewards. And when the dog goes over there, just say, hey, it's Max, and have him come to you, give him a food reward. Jackpot him, multiple food rewards. Okay, show him that the, there are other options than pulling on the leash. Even if you're going down the street and you have a dog that pulls for no apparent reason and, and pulling into the leash doesn't stop him, just give him, hey, Max, here, little bitty pop. How hard do you pop? That depends on your dog. That depends on what you need to do to get your dog to stop from pulling and turning to come from you. The dog has to learn in loose leash walking that every time he hits the end of that leash and puts tension on the leash, he's going to get a pop or he's, first he's going to get asked to come back. Max, Max, it's slow. Use a command. I used to use slow with my dogs. But use his name, say slow, and Reward him when he comes back, and then you go again. So that's, that's the two. You have the competitive healing, loose leash walking, and then controlled walking is more complicated and is beyond the scope of what I want to talk about here in this Q&A. But controlled walking, when we're walking on a leash, we train our dogs to lean into our knee, give us body contact. I don't care if they look ahead. Competitive healing is the dog looks up at you. Controlled walking, he can look ahead, he can look over here, but he has to have his shoulder leaning on my leg. That physical contact is what we expect. And I cover how to do it in our online course. So if you're interested, uh, go take a look at that.